truth is, is that most people don't wake up in the morning deciding to be good or evil. We just kind of wake up in the morning and we we start we start being ourselves. But you can kind of tell what what you are by what comes out of you. A lemon tree is not going to give you apples. An apple tree is not going to give you pears. So whatever comes out of that tree will tell you what kind of a tree it is. What comes out of you will tell me what kind of a tree you are. Are you good? Are you evil? You didn't make a decision to do one or the other. Or maybe you did make a decision to, to do one or the other, but it turns out you've been the opposite. Or you wanted to do good, but you went about it in some evil way, or the results of it were, were, were quite clearly evil. We really want to do good, and so we'll try to, to manipulate the world, people, to get the outcome that we want, because we think that the outcome that we want is so good that it's worth doing that too. But when you do that, you're, you're doing so much damage that whatever thing you've built up, the foundation of it is going to be rotten. A rotten foundation can't support a house. Without struggle, we become weak. Without love and compassion, we cannot heal. For as long as humans have thought of anything, this has always been. Of course, people can change, but that's it. You have to be one. And no matter which one you are, you are necessary. This brings me back to a quote that uh, I'm hearing on Thanksgiving. To the healers that built us up and the destroyers that made us feel. Everybody's important, including you. He didn't say anything about mankind being bad or good. He said that mankind is composed. <coughs> mankind just is. The truth is, is that most people don't wake up in the morning deciding to be good or evil, or deciding to do good or evil. We just kind of wake up in the morning and we, we, start, we start being ourselves. But you can kind of tell what, what you are by what comes out of you. It's like I've said, you know, you have a, a lemon tree, a lemon tree is not going to give you apples, no matter what. And an apple tree is not going to give you pears. So whatever comes out of that tree will tell you what kind of a tree it is. So what comes out of you will tell me what kind of a tree you are. Are you good? Are you evil? You didn't make a decision to do one or the other. Or maybe you did make a decision to, to do one or the other, but it turns out you've been the opposite. You were trying to do good, or you wanted to do good, but you went about it in some evil way, or the results of it were, were, were quite clearly evil. That second one, that first one's pretty common. We, we really want to do good, and so we'll try to, to manipulate the world and people to get the outcome that we want, because we think that the outcome that we want is so good that it's worth doing that to. But when you do that, you're, you're doing so much damage that whatever thing you built up, the foundation of it is going to be rotten. A rotten foundation can't support a house. A yeah, rotten foundation can't support a house. Neither could my dad. What's that? A rotten foundation cannot support a house. That's right. And so, when we make that decision about which of these two things to be, it, I guess the easiest way I was thinking about it yesterday was that you've got people who love and create, and those are the gods. And then we've got people who hate and destroy. Of course, those are the devils. When we talk about what it is for, for, for God to be God, the attributes of God, we often talk about power, you know, loving, knowledge. But there's something that's even more fundamental, because no matter what culture you go to, all of the gods seem to share this one characteristic, which is that the gods create. So what it is to be a god is to create. What it is to be a goddess is to, to create. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And 
every major religion has something like that, where it's the gods who create. And when the gods destroy, it's to reestablish what's been created. It's to defend what's been created. So it's destroying the destruction, if that makes sense. And so devils, on the other hand, are the ones who are always seeking to, to hate, and especially to destroy. To destroy and break down what's been created. The gods build up a world, the devils try to tear it down. Gods create humans, the devils try to tear them down. Because that's all the power that the devil has. Never to create, never to make anything. But only to, to ruin and, and destroy what's in place. And the methods that the devils use to do that are all in place too. Lying, cheating, stealing, deceiving, manipulating. And it's interesting that we'll use those exact same methods to try to achieve what we think is going to be something good. We'll try to manipulate people, cheat people, you know, um, lie to people so we can get the outcomes that we want. That's that rotten foundation I was just mentioning. And so, you can't use the methods of devils to achieve the ends of gods. And yet we oftentimes think that we can. You know? It's been said before by Bolier, said that the, the greatest trick that the devil ever played was to convince the world that he didn't exist. Does the devil have to get you to, to follow him? No. All the devils have to do is to get you to, to contradict the gods. If they can get you to go against this, then you're, by, then you're de facto, you're by default in favor of this. Are you using the methods of the gods? Are you using love and kindness and compassion? No? Well, then you're using the methods of the devils. The devils don't, again, the devils don't have to get you to, to commit yourself to them. They only have to get you to, to defy the gods. So, this is why it is that we look at, at artists and musicians and we love them so much. Because we recognize that there's something in them. There's a spark of the divine in them. Something that we admire. This is why we see little kids and a little kid will, will draw a circle with a yellow uh, crayon and then like scribble across it. And we look at it and we're like, that's beautiful. That's a sun, isn't it? Yeah! And the kid gets all excited because we recognize what it is. Yeah. And that's why we love seeing little kids create stuff, because we recognize at this moment right now, you're going the way of the divine. And we, we get concerned as they get older, and we see certain kids who are destroying things from very early ages. They like to you know, break holes in walls and tear, you know, the little kid who creates the, the, paint, the, uh, the little scribbly sun, and you've always got that one kid who comes over and like, tears it in half because he hates the fact that the other kid got credit for it. This is the story of, of Cain and Abel, if you're familiar with it, if you know what it is. It's the one who comes along, and you've got the one who does well. And we're asked, if you do well, will you not be rewarded? Of course. Of course. It might not be the reward that you want, but that's pride. Pride is the thing that, that gets us to behave like devils. I can manipulate because I know how things should be. I can lie. I can cheat. I can steal because the thing that I'm trying to... To bring about, I know is good. Well, is it though? Is it though, or is it self-serving? Is it interesting that the good that oftentimes people try to bring about, especially the good, quote unquote, that they try to bring about through those deceptive tactics, always seem to benefit them? It's never selfless. It never harms. It never harms them, but benefits other people. That's interesting. It should tell us something, because maybe. Because if, if it's true that the thing that we're after is, is so good, and that love is kind of at the center of that, then it doesn't matter if it's good for you or bad for you, quote, end quote. Of course it's good for you just by virtue of the fact that you're doing it from love. What's done out of love is done beyond good and evil. But if you're doing it out of love, and it somehow harms you, quote, unquote, in other words, it gives you the perception of it having harmed you, well, it was still good, wasn't it, if you're doing it for somebody else altruistically out of love? So we want both. I want to benefit them and me, and then therefore I can express my love that way. And that's not done for the other person. The, 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 the good that you do for somebody else, and again, it's just a perception and illusion of good, but the good that you do for somebody else is only a, 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 happy, bri a happy byproduct of the good that you're doing for yourself. I mean, think about this. If, if we, were, if we were to surround ourselves with people, forget about living in a world like this, but if we were able to surround ourselves with people who had our best interests at heart above their own, and if you were one of those people, by the way, who, who encircled people 
who have, uh, for whom you have their best interests at heart. You would never have to have your own best interests at heart. Because there's always people who love you who are looking out for you. Oh, but the world's not like that. Not with that attitude. Not with that attitude. But one thing's for sure, that if you adopt the methods of the, of the world, you're going to be of the world. If you adopt the methods of the devils, you're going to be of the devils. If you're going to adopt the methods of the gods, you're going to be of the gods. So if the whole thing is, well, if I, even if I behave well, the world's still going to crap. Okay. So the world's going to crap anyway, no matter what? Yes. Okay, then that's all the incentive in the world to be good then. Because if you're going to be, you know, if, it's go if you can't change the end, you might as well make yourself as good as possible. Be the best that you possibly can. Especially in the face of not being able to change things. Because there is something heroic in doing the right thing despite the fact that you think that you can't change things. The change that, you, that you're going to bring about, you may not even see it directly. But there's something in knowing that you did the right thing. Because what's done well is done forever. And the things that you do tend to, tend to reverberate through history in ways that you cannot possibly imagine. You know, it's unreal to think about that. That a decision you make today about whether to go down the hallway left or right is going to reverberate throughout history for thousands of years, oh. assuming we're here. So if things are going to crap anyway, then why, do, then why, then why be bad? Why follow the ways of the devils? Might as well follow the ways of the gods. And be something of a difference in that. There's something heroic in that resistance to, to take on something willingly and to resist the evils of it. Mm. Yeah. Or we could just sit there and throw up our hands and say, well, the world's screwed up, so I'm going to be screwed up too. Okay. So you're a bundle of chemicals that's responding to other chemical stimuli. And once you're dead, that's it. Mm. It's a dark end, man. It's a dark end. But there are these two sorts of people. And at some point, everybody has to make the decision which of these two avenues they're going to go down. The way of gods or the way of the devils. And if you think about it that way, maybe they'll give you some kind of an impulse to, to do the right thing. Yeah. Or they'll give you the impulse to do the evil thing. But at least you're clear about which one you're choosing. And of course, if you choose the evil thing, don't complain about the, uh, about the outcomes. Because if you follow the ways of the gods, then you can always celebrate the outcomes, regardless of how things turn out. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Yeah. Gotta say, there's two things I was not expecting my head to process.